Now let's discuss some other mic specifications that may impact your decision. We'll start with dynamic microphones because they are much simpler. Up on screen, I have a very typical dynamic microphone spec sheet. First thing we have is frequency response. If they just give us numbers like 50 hertz to 15,000 hertz, that's not very helpful. What we actually want to look at is the frequency response graph, which I already walked through how to read. That is where we get the actual useful information. Then the list the polar pattern type, which I already covered in depth in the polar pattern section of this series. Next, they list sensitivity. The typical dynamic ranges anywhere from minus 57 or minus 58 all the way up to minus 50 decibels. If you go below minus 57 dB, then you're going to have to start worrying about the preamp that you're running the microphone through. Most modern preamps can drive most dynamic microphones, but we'll discuss that more in the interfaces portion of this series. Now let's hear what kind of impact the dynamic mic sensitivity can have on the underlying hiss in the recording. So for this demo, I have the SM7B and the RE320 set up. The 7B has a sensitivity of around minus 59 dB, and the RE320 is around minus 52.5 dB. Both mics are running into the Universal Audio X8 with no processing. The gain on the 7B is set at 59 decibels. The gain for the RE320 is set at 46 dB. Now I'll shut up, amplify the signal, and let you hear the difference in the noise floor. And then they list impedance, and honestly, I find this to be pretty irrelevant for the podcaster and YouTuber, because running through some vintage gear, this can come into play, but most of us are amateurs and we're not running into $1,000 preamps, and any of the benefit we may get from that impedance loading is going to be lost when it's compressed and uploaded to YouTube or into a 120 kilobits per second MP3. So I think this is pretty much irrelevant. Then we have the much more complicated spec sheet of a condenser microphone. Again, first we have the polar pattern, in this case, cardioid. Again, they list the frequency range, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Again, refer to the actual graph to get useful information. Then they list sensitivity. Sometimes they'll provide this in millivolts per pascal. I'll throw a link in the description to the website that I use to convert this into dBV. Most spec sheets do provide this spec in dBV. And for condensers, they typically range from minus 40 up to minus 30. This is pretty irrelevant because most condensers are not going to give you any problems with your preamp unless you're recording really quiet sound sources really far away. Anything between minus 40 and minus 30 is going to be golden. Some handheld condensers go down to minus 45, minus 46, but you're going to be close miking those, so that's no problem either. Then we have impedances, and again, I think this is irrelevant for us podcasters, YouTubers, and home studio people because we're not running into expensive vintage gear. And then we get to the interesting information, equivalent noise level or self noise. This tells us how much noise the actual microphone's electronics are adding to our signal. I usually focus on the A-weighted spec here, and in this instance, it is 7 dBA, which is fantastic. Any self-noise that's 12 dBA or lower, I would classify that as fantastic, and you're likely never going to hear the noise of the microphone over the noise of your room. From 12 dBA up to 16 dBA, I would classify that as really good, not likely to cause any issues for you. From 16 to 20 dBA, we're starting to get into a little bit hairier of territory, but still, it's likely to be useful in most cases, especially especially for spoken word and an imperfect room, then 20 dBA and up, I would classify that as a noisier microphone, and you may actually start to hear the hiss from the internals of the microphone making it into your recording, especially if you record quiet sounds. 
I want to let you hear three microphones with different tiers of self-noise. So I have the C02 from Samson, which has 22 decibels of self-noise, the Neumann U87 on cardioid with 14 dBA of self-noise, and the Rode NT1, which has 4.5 dBA of self-noise. I have applied the Universal Audio High Pass filter on all of these to avoid any kind of low-end rumble, and when I'm speaking at a normal volume, chances are you aren't going to hear too much of that self-noise, but once I start whispering and have to amplify these in post, Let's go ahead and hear if you hear a difference in the self-noise between the Samson C02, which has 22 decibels, the U87, which has 14 decibels, or the Rode NT1, which has 4.5 decibels of self-noise. And let's just amplify the silence by 20 decibels so you can really hear the difference between the microphones. And the last spec we're talking about is maximum SPL, which stands for max sound pressure level. This tells us how loud a sound the microphone can handle before it actually starts distorting. In this case, the microphone has a max SPL of 138 dB, which is fantastic. Let's go ahead and measure my voice and see if we actually need to care about this spec. Just to be a bit more scientific about it, here I am talking into the microphone a few inches away, as well as this SPL meter, just to see what kind of level I'm sending into the microphone, speaking at a reasonable level. 83.6 dB. And what if I get really loud and yell into the microphone? 103.9 dB. Let's actually hear what happens when I try to overdrive the Neumann TLM49, which has a max SPL of 110 dB up to 129 dB, depending on what kind of harmonic distortion level is acceptable. Oh my gosh, I'm yelling into the TLM49! This is so loud! Is it distorting the microphone? 107 dB. Still not loud enough. What if I get right on top of the mic and yell into it? Will it distort now? 122 dB, so we should have a little bit of distortion. So because most condensers seem to have a max SPL of above 120 dB, I highly doubt any of us podcasters or YouTubers are going to run into any issues. If this spec is above 130, I would say you are golden for everything unless you're recording drums or something, unless you're recording loud guitar amps. For spoken word, most condensers will be fine. And those are all the specs we're looking at. And to wrap up the series, we're discussing how much you should spend on a microphone, and that video is linked directly beneath me as well as in the description.